So telling your story. So we talked about this earlier. People are not going out to buy your shoes. They're going out to buy your story. They're buying your shoes because their, your shoes make them run faster, because your shoes make them cool, because your shoes, uh, you know, they're not going to Target and buying the cheapest shoes they can. If they are, you're out of business. Um, you know, the $20 Velcro sneakers at Target might be just as good as your shoes, but your shoes are telling a story. At the end of the day, it's your story that people are connecting with. So you need to make sure that you're telling your story, that you know how and that you're doing it. So we're going to talk about two different ways that we do that. The first is through live tweeting. Now, live tweeting is kind of a ubiquitous term. It can be done through any platform. You can do it through Facebook, through Instagram. It came, it came from Twitter, so it's called live tweeting, but it's not limited to Twitter. Live tweeting is literally telling the story of your event on Twitter or online, excuse me. So let's say you're a nonprofit and you're hosting a fundraiser and you're hoping 70 people show up and 100 people show up. That's awesome. You're feeling good. You're high fives all around. But guess what? There's a thousand people at home who didn't come to your event who could be engaged in it. They didn't come because they couldn't get a babysitter. They didn't come because their car was broken down. They had to work. Maybe they live in another city. Not all your supporters live local and aren't going to make it to your event. By live tweeting your event, you allow, a th instead of the hundred people who show up, the thousand people who might be interested in engaging. Um, so you live tweet through three parts. Uh, every story has three parts. The beginning, the middle, and the end. Now, this sounds obvious, but it's surprisingly not. In my experience, almost everybody does one of these. Some people do the second one, and almost nobody does the third one. So we're going to talk through real quick. Um, I don't know what time we're at, whether I'm going to open it up to the floor. Okay, I'm going to, so a beginning tweet. Um, let's say I am hosting this fundraiser. What's a good beginning tweet? Anybody? What am I trying to do in the beginning? Yeah, tell people where the event is, give people the time, also sell tickets or get people to RSVP, let people know it's coming. Those are great beginning tweets. You need to make sure people know this event is coming. This is the one that pretty much everybody does because everybody wants to sell tickets or get people to show up in the door. This is the easy one. This is the one people do. Two weeks in advance, you start telling people, hey, sign up today. Unfortunately, your story doesn't end two weeks in advance, it's just starting. Now, if you're doing a one-day event, your before might start two weeks before or three days before, it depends on the event. Your event, your before might start a year in advance. If you're running a political campaign, if you're launching a new pair of sneakers, it might be a year in advance. You need to decide when your before starts, but you need to make sure you're telling it. For this fundraiser, if we sign this new band that everybody's going to be excited to see, we should be telling people about it. If Ian's Pizza is going to donate mac and cheese pizza, we want to tell people about it. We want people to know what's going on. Keep them excited. Get them interested in the event that's going to happen day of. That's the beginning. The middle. Let's hear what's an example of the middle. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll just jump in. Um, so... The middle is everything that's happening at the event. How much money you're raising, how many people showed up. If your executive director of your nonprofit gets on stage and speaks, everything he or she is saying should be live tweeted. You should be sharing that information because he or she is not just speaking to the 100 people in the room. He or she is speaking to the 1,000 people who didn't make it to the event. So literally quote that person as they're speaking. If you want to use video, great. If you want to use text, fine. You should share pictures. You should talk about how many people showed up. Tell the story as it's unfolding. That's the middle. The end, what's the obvious end tweet? Thank you. Thank everybody for coming. That's the most obvious one. Thank people for showing up. Your volunteers, your supporters, the people that gave money, thank those people. But also, show me all the empty plates of food. Show me the, you know, the empty cupboard or the full stack of canned foods that you delivered. End the story. 